All right, guys. So recently I've been working a lot with outdoor audio and outdoor speaker systems. Uh, and one of the biggest things that seems to be a hurdle for a lot of people is not just the installation knowledge. Uh, that's a, a very big part of it. But the main reason is cost. That's, that's a lot of the reason why you see uh, Bluetooth speakers, these portable patio speakers. And I noticed recently that they're getting pretty involved. Um, you've got these mountable Bluetooth speakers that are supposed to be like you plug them in and you mount them to the side of your pergola or like your deck railing on your patio. And they're basically wireless installed speakers that you pretty much still have to run power to and that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Other than like knowledge and cost, I don't, I don't really get it because you're doing most of the work and you're not getting the benefit of just having something that, you know, works all the time that you don't have to pair to and, and deal with. So I've come up with a few things that you can essentially find on eBay that if you, if you kind of know what you're looking for and you look carefully, you can get some fantastic deals on things that most people wouldn't realize can be used for this. So when we're talking about outdoor audio, we're talking about things that are weatherproof, that are going to be kept outdoors, uh, if not all year round, at least the, the general outdoor seasons, um, your spring, your summer and most of your fall, things that you might take in in the winter um, or take in your speakers, things like that, but leave all of your wiring and, and all of that in place. So that's one criteria. It's got to be fully weatherproof. It needs to look nice and it needs to be simple um, and it needs to just work. You know, it needs to be something that, that when I go outside, I'm not setting things up. I'm not having to deal with things. I pull out my phone or I send a signal to it from, you know, maybe my, my receiver in my living room, something like that, or connect like a, a Chromecast uh, audio to it or, or something and, or an Amazon Echo, and I can just send a signal to it from my phone and I don't have to deal with it anymore. So that's kind of what we're looking at here is going to be inexpensive but reliable and easy to install. So one of the criteria that I really wanted was a 70 volt system. So with your normal 8 ohm system, they work really well, they've got good low end response, but you're limited on how far you can run the cables and depending on, on how far that run is, you can get some pretty beefy uh, wiring for it and you're limited on speakers. For the most part, with most amplifiers, you're gonna be limited to two speakers, a left and a right. Um, maybe getting away with four speakers, having two per channel, and that's gonna put you down at four ohms, which is about the limit of most amplifiers, if they'll even let you do that. And the big problem that I have with this is, one, you, you're limited on how many speakers you can have to cover an area, so you've got to turn them up louder to, to cover a larger area. And you don't really want stereo. You want something that's mono, primarily because if you're moving around in your landscape or on your patio, you don't want to be all of a sudden hearing different parts of a track depending on where you are. You really want it to, to be the same throughout so that everyone is getting the same experience and you're not losing part of a song that's, you know, got the guitar or the drums or something faded over to one channel or the vocals over to another and that's on the other side of your yard or on the other side of your patio. So I wanted something that was mono. I wanted something that was 70 volt so that we can run it a longer distance and not really worry about how many speakers we're adding within reason. We'll get into that in a second. But I also wanted something that was inexpensive, small, and easy to understand. So what I've come across is a lot of surplus uh, kind of office PA systems, sound systems, uh, retail store paging systems, and things like that. And this can be a, a trap that you can fall into if you're not careful with getting something that has a lot of weird features and uh, what's called ducking. So where when you make an announcement, it 
will lower the volume of things. You don't need any of this. You need signal in, amplified signal to your speakers out. So something very, very simple, something small, and very low power consumption. So what I've pretty much come down to that I found reliably and for a reasonable price are uh, things from a company named Extron. And one of them right here is going to be this MPA401. As you can see, this guy is small and it is light. Uh, doesn't seem like there's much of anything in it. That's because this is a Class D amplifier. So this is a very, very efficient amplifier. Now, when you look at your normal amplifiers in home theater, a lot of those are going to be class AB, um, things like that. And they may have a slightly cleaner waveform on the output. It's not going to really be something you're going to hear, especially outdoors. And you're going to pay a lot more for it, consume a lot more power, and generate a lot more heat. So class D is a really good way to go. It is very power efficient. Now this tiny little box right here is 70 volt output and it is 40 watts of power. It has a 3.5 millimeter input. It has RCA stereo inputs that sum to mono um, output for the speakers as well as balanced input on uh, screw terminals with a, a Phoenix connector then you again have a Phoenix connector um, on your output. So this little guy runs on 12 volts. Um, and it, it's astonishing to me, it's 1.5 amps max. So you're looking at uh, around maybe 20 watts total of power consumption for this at 12 volts, which is just kind of nuts. Um, and this thing has a working temperature range of 30 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, or roughly 0 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. Now, that's not going to do for some of you in the winter because it's going to get below freezing. However, if this is in an enclosure, it's going to generate a little bit of its own heat, and you could put something like this in your garden shed, something like that, and as long as it's not just in the blazing sun, 120 degrees working temperature is briefly reasonable. Like, that's something that you could have this outdoors in a dry location and not have to run cables into your house and things for your speakers. One thing you're going to want to look for with this, though, is the connector on it. So it's got this type of Phoenix connector for your speaker output, and these can be hard to find and expensive. So this little amplifier right here could be had for like $30 to $40. The key is make sure it includes that connector because you could pay an extra $10 or $20 just for that one connector alone because people know when you're missing them, you can't use the amplifier without them and they're going to charge for that. Um, so this is 40 watts of power total at 70 volts. Where that's going to come in to play is with our speaker selection. So I got a standard outdoor patio speaker. This one is from OSD Audio, and it is a 70-volt model. So back here, you've got a selector switch that can do 8 ohm, um, or you have your different taps. You've got your 4-watt, 8-watt, 16-watt, and 32-watt transformer taps. So that's going to be how much power this takes out of the 70-volt li uh, line and therefore how loud it can basically go. Um, so with a 40-watt uh, amplifier like the MPA401, you are only going to be able to run a couple of these under the 16-watt uh, setting. If you've got an 8, you could run four of these. And if you're running the 32, you're really only going to get one of these per amplifier. However, at 16 watts or at 8 watts, these are plenty for background music. They're not going to blast you out of your yard, but that really shouldn't be what you're aiming for at this point anyway. That's a much larger system and a different conversation entirely. Background music, nice music to enjoy while you're sitting out and relaxing, that's the goal here. So, this having a 3.5 millimeter input is perfect for something like your Chromecast Audio, or your Amazon Echo, something like that to go into here.
I will say, with these being a more professional commercial type amplifier, sometimes your top quality that these can actually do is not going to be reached with your unbalanced RCA or 3.5 millimeter uh, summed input. It's going to be your balanced and it's going to be a higher level. It is a professional gear level, not a consumer uh, level audio output. They run at two different levels essentially. Where that can be corrected is with something known as a buck or boost uh, level matcher. So this is an active line level matcher. It has inputs, it has outputs, and power. Now this has a built-in power supply, which is nice. This is a buck 202 from Extron as well. And you can get these pretty reliably um, on somewhere like eBay. This allows you to put a standard consumer level audio signal in and then get balanced uh, professional level out um, on your outputs. So this will get a little bit more out of your amplifier, a little bit cleaner signal, um, but it's adding extra cost. So you've got to keep that in mind that if you don't need the cleanest level signal, if you don't need the highest uh, volume that it, can, that it can put out, the highest power level, you're probably fine with just a standard 3.5 into this one amp. Now, one of the reasons I wanted 70 volt, not just because you can add multiple speakers, by daisy chaining them. So with a mono amplifier like this, you go out from one speaker, uh, or from the amplifier to a speaker, from that speaker to another, and so on. So you don't have to have your, le uh, your amplifier between your speakers toward the center of it. You can put it at one end of something in your house, in your shed, run one line out to one speaker, and then daisy chain them from there. You just wanna keep the overall wattage under the max wattage recommended for the amplifier. Now, one of the things that I really like about this also is your wiring. Because 70 volts is running at a higher voltage level, uh, lower amperage, you can get away with smaller gauge wiring. In most cases, 18 to 16 gauge wire is plenty. That reduces your cost. So when you're doing something outdoors, you're gonna wanna look for an outdoor rated cable. Um, Mono price companies like that sell really great outdoor cabling. And I would recommend looking for something that is 100% pure copper. Uh, what you're gonna find most of the time is CCA, known as copper clad aluminum. And over time, that can have corrosion issues. It's got issues at higher frequencies. Uh, due to the nature of the cable, it's, it's not your best bet. Now, if you're running bare bones as cheap as you can go, that may be a good option for you. But when I can, I try to stay to a, uh, a pure copper cable. One of the ways that you can do this that's readily available at pretty much every hardware store uh, that exists, at every big box store, is landscape lighting cable. You can get 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, 12 gauge, um, sometimes even 10 gauge in the big box stores. Um, and then you can get 10 gauge online pretty easily, but you won't need that. Your 18 or your 16 gauge landscape lighting wire is outdoor rated, it's sunlight resistant, and it is plenty of, of gauge to carry your, your audio level that we're dealing with here. So a standard landscape lighting wire connected from this little guy directly to one of these, and you can mount this on your deck, on your pergola, or with a post in your landscape to get better, more projected audio, more directional audio um, at a sometimes lower cost and not have to deal with all of the digging and things for an in-ground speaker or the possible water problem that you're going to get with a speaker really low to the ground. So this can be a great way to also... Uh, get a nice, adjustable, aimable speaker into your landscape, uh, most of the time at a much lower cost, depending on which one you select, but a much lower cost than a higher quality outdoor uh, landscape specific speaker. Now, if you wanted to run more speakers, Extron makes a lot of amplifiers, and you can find them for almost the same cost. It's pretty nuts. This is an XPA 2001. 
This is a mono amplifier that has the power supply built in, so you're going to get a little cost savings there compared to a, an external power supply for something like this. Mind you, this runs on 12 volts, so 12 volt lines or even a battery, anything like that, a uh, solar system, uh, a solar panel on your shed with a small battery and one of these guys, you've got a solar powered outdoor audio system. But these have built-in power supplies, so they make it a lot easier and a lot uh, cleaner kind of install. And this guy is 200 watts of power. 200 watts, and it weighs nothing. So 200 watts, one of these at max 32 watts, well, as you can do the math, you're getting about six of these speakers for one of these amplifiers. All daisy chained put down the same line. That is an insane amount of speakers for a general residential yard. You could have a couple on your deck, two or three out in your landscape, and be well within the specs of this. Now, you're not going to get the end-all be-all of low end. You're not going to have these outdoor subs and things. While they do make 70 volt subwoofers, they're expensive for a reason. They require very high quality transformers to transmit the low through them, um, otherwise, you're going to get some really weird sounds. It's it's not going to work quite right. You get this buildup, essentially, of, of harmonics in your transformer, and it messes everything up on the low end. This is, once again, for background music. If you want an outdoor subwoofer, most of the time you're better off going with an 8-ohm or a 4-ohm and a matching 8 or 4-ohm amplifier, or spending the money for a 70-volt uh, outdoor system with a subwoofer, in which case you're going beyond the scope of this video and getting way out of the budget. So with an amplifier like this costing maybe $30, $40, and then your speakers like this, you can pick a pair of these up reasonably with 70 volt taps for $40, $50 a lot of times, especially if you look on eBay and you get B-Stock, open box, things like that. So you're gonna get an amazing speaker um, system for this. And again, 40, 50 bucks, this is a pair of 70 volt speakers. Now you don't want standard commercial outdoor speakers like these weird 70 volt horns. That's going to sound awful and I do not recommend that at all. The other option that you could theoretically do is they make 70 volt uh, matching transformers that are 70 volt to 8 ohm um, and usually you can select your wattage on there, um, or they have a fixed wattage, and you can run regular 8-ohm speakers off of your 70-volt line. Again, something that is doable if you know what you're doing, but not easy. Something you're going to have to look up, research, and, and deal with, and then you've got external parts, and it's more of a headache than it's worth. So, the other cool thing with these is depending on how in-depth you want to get with the Extron especially, you've got rack mounts. So you can actually put all of your nice stuff, your amplifiers, multiple amplifiers, your buck boost, and you can all get it in one rack unit. This would be two channels with a 40 watt, a 200 watt, and the line matching uh, adapter here, your uh, line level converter, and all of this, they even make a mixer that's in this size for putting different inputs into it in one rack U that's not very deep at all. So overall, with your parts on eBay and then kind of adapting to what speakers you want outside and putting them on posts or something like that, instead of using a, an in-ground or a specific landscape speaker, you're getting one heck of a deal. Um, if you really kind of research and you figure out what you're looking for, something like these Extron Class D amplifiers, low gauge outdoor rated cable, and some speakers like this, combine that with one of your Amazon Echoes, you've got this like whole house audio system that you literally just tell it, you know, like, um, hey, Amazon Echo, uh, play music on my patio. And you walk out the door to your patio, you can control it with your phone with an app, and you've got one heck of a system that you never have to touch. 
just leave it in place and you've got audio whenever you want to the second you walk out the door with your drink. So that's all I got for you today, guys. Uh, we'll put the, uh, the video about installing the, uh, the speaker on the, the post for your outdoor uh, in the, the links um, or possibly above in the video. Click that, watch it, combine it with this, and you've got an amazing system for probably under like $100 total, not including your labor, but I don't know how much you charge for that. So make yourself cheap for the day. All right, guys, see you in the next video and enjoy.